So this is where it all began, Jimmy. Um, it looked a bit different then, it had green paint on it and we used to have jobs on a placard and window. But in 1984 I came to work here and it was called the Edinburgh Volunteer Exchange. I come here in 1991 uh -huh. and it's now 2014 and I'm st still doing volunteer work. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. really do a, a full-time job. Uh -huh. This was the next best thing because I had, because I had mental health problems. I'd done a job for a year before I come here and it wasn't working out, so I started yeah. this. I was going to do it for six months and actually I've done it for 23 years. There were very low expectations at that time of people who wanted to volunteer or, or people recovering from mental ill health. You know, um, what tended to be seen as things they could then go and do once they'd recovered were very, very limited. It was much more right, about, right. no, you can't do that, no, you can't do that. It got me thinking, I can do things, I can make something in my life and just enjoy doing what I'm doing rather than go to work, work too many hours and end up in the hospital. It was a big change in my life because I spent a lot of time at home doing things just to pass time and I thought no I must get out because it's good to meet people, keep up your skills for things you've done before and then you're helping other people and I get a lot of satisfaction out of it. I think since uh, I first met Roslyn uh, over a year ago, I've noticed that uh, she's become a lot more comfortable uh, with those around her. And in addition to that, she seems to have gained some self-confidence through picking up knowledge and skills about how to operate the indoor curling and how to uh, help people play the game. I was feeling a bit, not depressed, but a bit low. So I would say to people, especially people younger than me, you should volunteer because it can lead to a paid job. And I, I had three paid jobs, and I'm sure it was all to do with getting the confidence back. If I didn't have these committees and the volunteering, I would probably be stuck in the house which would personally do my head in. I'm on the Queen's button relay this year for the Commonwealth Games. And who's all here? Everybody here for you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. you. Obviously, I would say go for it and ignore what other people say and just go with what you think. Well done, Ian. <laughs> Fantastic. That was great. You can never tell what's going to come in this. And I like the challenge. People might think that they have nothing worth giving, but indeed, everybody does. Everybody has valuable skills and things that they can volunteer. It supported people who had mental health problems, many of whom had the experience of life and they'd lost their confidence and they'd experienced significant stigma and discrimination. And people who were widely seen actually as having nothing to contribute. It supported them to volunteer, to be a helper than rather to always be helped. People who use mental health services were beginning to have a voice, weren't they? They'd been very not listened to. And I thought that um, this project was one where people would have another voice, which was the voice that goes out into the community, into other community settings. And um, that voice hadn't been heard before. And I thought that was, that was really um, what attracted me to it. So I first approached Edinburgh Volunteer Exchange, as it was then known, uh, back in 1991 when I was an inpatient in the Young People's Unit at the Royal Edinburgh Hospital. Well, I think it starts with a sort of spark and the motivation. And um, yeah, I'm really, I'm, I'm proud of what I've achieved through voluntary work as well, because I think, you know, being lost in the mental health system um, other people made decisions for me, and uh, you know I, I was quite, I was very limited in that world, and it was all about the support I needed and uh, what I had to get from other people, 
and actually making the decision to do voluntary work was a big part of helping me to recover because it was about taking um, some control back for myself, making a decision. The great thing about the health and wellbeing team is to be able to move people forward in their lives but also the thing that really inspires us as well is the people themselves. I think volunteering is a way for them to share the wealth of skills and talents and experience they have and not just be defined by a health issue or a disability or an addiction. It gives other people the chance to see who these volunteers really are. I've got volunteering in my toolbox that um, my wellness tools that I, that I need to keep me well and things that I'll do when, when I need to feel better and volunteering's right at the top of my, my box. After all the volunteering I've done, I'm, I'm able to go to other organisations and because I'm a volunteer talks ambassador with Volunteer Centre Edinburgh, which is when, when Sarah asked me to become a member of the team, I was really so proud of myself and I could never have seen me, as I say, going along even to listen to a talk sometimes in a big group of people rather than be the one talking to people. And that for me is, is um, really important and it's really, it's like really powerful that you can help somebody um, when, you, when you couldn't even help yourself in the beginning. Working alongside Michelle, we get to know like how the other one works, so I say we become a bit of a double act and uh, steal each other's lines sometimes, <laughs> but we don't get annoyed about that. My experience has grown as well. I've learned things through volunteering that I didn't know before, so I've gathered some skills that I didn't have before. It helped me to get back out the house because I had had depression and I built up on it. I started with one and then that made me feel a bit better and I enjoyed it and it gave me confidence. 30 years on, looking back, I feel quite a few emotions but very, very proud to have been in at the beginning because we didn't realise when we planted that little seed how it would grow and how important it would be and how much influence it would have on volunteering as a whole. I think for a lot of people it was about providing some kind of routine which wasn't hospital based so it gave people a sense of identity, it gave people the opportunity to use their skills, look at their skills, look at what they could contribute to other people. The agencies themselves were having to do a big big change as well and think about um, this isn't always the traditional volunteer that we're going to be getting. These volunteers might have some support needs and most agencies weren't equipped or prepared or had the money or the resources to do that. And to convince them that these volunteers had something to contribute, that, that was another part of it because they didn't always understand that. My degree is in archaeology and I've always had a, such an interest in the heritage and history. Inspiring, I think, because you're digging in soil and you're thinking, it's been hundreds and hundreds of years since somebody actually touched this, you know, the soil or the, the pavements that we uncovered. I had actually tried almost immediately after I got my degree writing to quite a lot of places to see if they would take volunteers and basically got a letter back saying they wouldn't take volunteers, they were too busy to um, spend the time sort of looking after me, supervising me. If you're not out in the real world when you've had problems, if you've had illnesses, you become a bit lost, you don't have an identity, you don't have that label, you're not in the workforce, so you feel a bit like a second class citizen sometimes. Um, and I think we need to kind of get out of that way of thinking or feeling that other people are judging us. Being able to move forward in life, I think, because it's, it's a confidence thing, it's feeling that you're valued actually, that you're, you're doing something worthwhile. It might only be a small thing, but you're part of a team and that, that small thing is really of use. With the collation work, it's all hands-on. And for me, I really like doing that sort of thing because, because of my eyesight, it means that I don't have to strain my eyes looking at the computer screen the whole time. 
and I can do it mostly with my hands and feeling what I'm doing and things. At Skills Path we offer work training placements for 18 months. Um, we have a mailing service which is the core of the training but um, alongside that we support people to build up skills that they will be able to move on with um, so that will be general employability skills. And the staff are so kind and friendly and understanding of everyone's individual needs rather than just looking at everyone as a whole. You're used to um, receiving care and receiving services um, but when they volunteer they're actually able to provide services and I think that really builds on people's confidence and self-esteem um, and a sense of, of worth and they can uh, take that and, and move on with their life. I think it's a real benefit. Rory applied for literally hundreds of jobs and you were turned down again and again and again and it was the, the most awful thing for Rory and awful as a parent to watch and always, always the one consistent thing you had was Volunteer Edinburgh which really helped through that period of time. I definitely think volunteering has changed my life. It's given me so much more confidence. He feels happy which is very important <laughs> because that's made him feel well. I think if you feel happy, you feel yeah. well. So that's been a really big bit of it. And a sense of belonging somewhere has been really important with, with people who care. And that's been really good as well. It's made me realise that I am able to go out and do things, find things to do like jobs and things, and that people are understanding in different places and it's really helpful. Why elderly people? Well, it was felt that I could communicate well with elderly people because I, I quite, I'm quite relaxed with elderly people and I'm used to them because I was living with them so I thought well I'll do elderly people but I didn't realise it would become a long term thing and more like a career with elderly people. I didn't realise that. Totally reliable, totally committed, and we couldn't run the group without him. I think he's irreplaceable. Um, he's become so much part of the group that everybody just knows James is going to be there, so it's going to be all right. They would be amazed, my mum and dad, because they were always worried that one day I would be left on my own, like I was when my dad died, because he was the last to go. What would I do? Who would look after me? What would happen to me? But here I am working with elderly people, going into their homes. He could maybe only do two hours a week, and that went on for about a year. And then gradually he got more confident and, and in a sense more healthy. If I give hope to people, that's, that's, what, that's what I want to do. People that were in my position or in my position today, anybody really who faces adversity, there's, there's always hope. And uh, I proved it. Thirty years on, countless people have received support, guidance, simple belief and encouragement to overcome barriers and discrimination and become active volunteers. It is difficult to imagine how much poorer Edinburgh would be without the talents, energy and dedication of Jimmy, Roz, Ian, Joe, Michelle, Maureen, Irene, Rory, James and the thousands of other volunteers who give their time to build a better city for everyone. The small project in 1984 set about changes which continue to resonate and spread. It aimed for a more equal city where no matter who you are, what you have to give matters and is valued. And as a city, we are grateful.